This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Uh, yeah, these days, especially on social media, um, if you put yourself out, uh, people will often say, oh, you're, you're a disinformation agent, you're a troll, you're, you're this and you're, uh, you're that. And uh, this uh, source is, 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 uh, is believable. This is not. Uh, I don't buy into any of that. Um, I just kind of look at the different sources and I try to uh, look at things just where the crumbs fall. And uh, to me, that's calling called playing around um, with ideas um, and with information that it doesn't mean to say that uh, you know that that's my narrative that that's what I believe it's just a process and uh, you know hopefully getting to the truth in a highly highly complex and mystifying world where well essentially we wouldn't know the fuck what's going on really um, so this is my attempt to kind of make a little bit of sense of all of this and also get to beyond the kind of what I call the theory of infinite coincidence. There's no connection uh, between A and B and C. They're all quite distinct. Uh, there's no known causative uh, link uh, because they don't look and don't want and they certainly don't want us to look. Uh, so this is me just trying to make uh, make sense of it and just to uh, see if perhaps there might be some connections between these very uh, disparate and seemingly unconnected uh, phenomena uh, such as uh, um, a fire on a Russian submarine, uh, various kind of uh, incidences that we've discussed uh, before uh, at a 7 point, uh, what was it, 7.2 earthquake in, in Southern California the other day. Could there be a link? Well, let's have a look. I want to present a possible scenario. Uh, first of all, I need to go back to events uh, before sorry, before the events on March the 3rd, the deaths of the uh, the Russian sailors on board the uh, Le Sharik, the uh, top secret um, Russian submarine project. So, first of all, this uh, Russian TV broadcast uh, from today, which I'll just show the introductory part, uh, revealed just how top secret this submarine and the whole project is. Специальным пропускам. Вон там за этими кораблями в бухте Вайнга на восточном берегу незамерзающего Кольского залива сейчас как раз и стоит после аварии глубоководный аппарат. Показывать его нельзя. Конструкции даже внешний вид государственная тайна. We need to go back to events of the time. Within two hours of President Putin calling an emergency meeting with defense officials upon his learning 14 Russian submariners had been killed, this was followed by Vice President Mike Pence being abruptly called back to the White House, remember? Apparently, an urgent communique was received by the Minister of Defense, Sergei Shoigu, sent from U.S. Uh, Air Force Chief of Staff General David Goldstein. And I think he's the one that was uh, considered by Israel to uh, head their military forces, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, as saw General Goldfein, is that Goldfein? Yeah, uh, publicly releasing a three-step counter plan to deal 
with a Russian nuclear attack upon the United States. And I'll come back to that uh, just at the end. Uh, but I'm just uh, showing this to you. All of this coincided with a massive dynamic mongoose operation being conducted by NATO anti-submarine forces off the coast of Russia. So there's an article, uh, official article came out, Dynamic Mongoose is the second annual NATO-led maritime anti-submarine warfare interoperability exercise. Well, that's a mouthful. Uh, and Norway is the host nation. After Dynamic Manta conducted in the Mediterranean, Mongoose is conducted off the coast of Norway and is scheduled for June the 25th to July the 8th, 2018. The aim of this exercise is to provide all participants with complex and challenging warfare training to enhance their interoperability and proficiency in anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare skills. Eight NATO nations are participating in Dynamic Mongoose in 2018 with two submarines, seven surface units and three maritime patrol aircraft. So, um, is it possible that all of this marked an attack on the Lasharic? Information, and remember all of this is top secret, indicates that the Lasharic was much feared by the Americans. Um, for instance, as a uh, side story, the only vessel capable of retrieving an F-35 jet that sank off the coast of uh, Japan is the Lasharic. So the Lasharic is able uh, reportedly to dive as deep as 6,100 meters or 20, 000, just over 20,000 feet. And its uh, main function, according to a Russian source, is uh, listening to foreign underwater communication lines and lifting interesting weapons and military equipment from the depths. And of course they won't mention the possibility that they it might also, uh, in war, times of war, uh, be used to actually cut, um, cut the lines. I mean that's also a possibility. And at the same time uh, furthering further protecting Russia's similar communications equipment and submarine cables, cables from uh, penetration. So we have this uh, report here, which I'll put in the, all of this go in the links below. Um, so this is the Russian article. And uh, translated into English. Uh, what the Defence Ministry reported about the state of emergency. So just today, uh, news is coming out that the crew battled to the end to save it, though at the cost of 14 sailors' lives, and I believe uh, some of them might have sacrificed themselves to, uh, to save the vessel. The deep sea vessel they saved is now placed in Severomorsk, which is a closed city and the main administrative base of the Russian Northern Fleet. So just in case you think all of this is getting a little bit uh, far-fetched, then consider this. Um, a March 2019 warning issued by US Naval Vice Admiral Ronald A. Boxall who, during a discussion on directed energy weapons systems on warships, stated, we are going to burn the boats, if you will, and move forward with this technology. So there's no way, really, that uh, Russia would not respond to this, especially seeing that since 2009, deep siren underwater uh, laser uh, tactical uh, paging system has allegedly been 
um, in development. And here goes an article uh, from back then. Uh, submarines, underwater lasers change everything. Finally, there are lasers that can be used communicating underwater. This is done by using a laser pulse turned to ionize water and generate an acoustic pulse. Thus, surface ships or aircraft could communicate with suitably equipped subs. Um, yeah. So this was confirmed uh, last year um, by Chinese military hackers who penetrated the US Navy computers to discover details about their new Sea Dragon weapon, a penetration the US Navy countered by pushing propaganda that the Sea Dragon was a missile system. So there we are, it's a Sea Dragon again. Uh, so the next bit is speculation uh, based on placing together some of the material and uh, what others have said. Inferring that the US Navy had indeed developed an underwater laser system, weapon system, able to heat up and cause fires within submarine, um, the Russian Ministry of Defense on the 27th of June ordered the Northern Fleet submarine Vladikavkaz to make a transition to um, to the Baltic Sea. And that brings us back to uh, Dynamic Mongoose, because the on 1st of July, US-led NATO warships began their annual anti-ship submarine exercise Dynamic Mongoose in the Norwegian Sea west of Andoya, northern uh, Norway, um, that has seen six frigates, ten aircraft, and several submarines from Canada, the United States, France, Germany, Poland, Spain, Turkey, and the United Kingdom, as well as host nation Norway, participating in a war exercise uh, that will last until the 14th of July. So that's about now. So, do you remember the reports of how the Russian submarine, Vladikavkaz, sailed right through the middle of this exercise? And then the next thing we know, the Losharik had its interior set ablaze by an unknown force. Um, and I believe that the Russians have quite naturally um, keeping some operative secrecy and have not revealed the real uh, and full truth to this. The next thing that followed on to this was um, uh, President Putin signing into law a few hours after all of this a document suspending the main uh, nuclear arms treaty between Russia and the United States. So this was on, actually, yeah, this was on the 3rd of July. That's the date of the accident. And uh, it was last edited on the day after. So all of this has to be seen in the context of threats by and from the United States especially the threat by the U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General David Goldfein that he was prepared to launch a massive second attack that he vowed would ensure the destruction of anyone launching a nuclear attack upon the United States. So I'll just finish this segment off uh, with that article. Um, so this came out on Oh yes, it came out on the uh, on the third of July. What well, wouldn't you know? Just the very day uh, that the uh, incident with the Sharik happened. So, Air Force Chief Goldfein reveals Russian nuclear attack counter plan. According to Air Force Chief of Staff, a nuclear attack can be mitigated in three steps that should be taken as quickly as possible. These steps are designed for the destruction of incoming ballistic missiles as well as a successful retaliatory strike. 
On Tuesday, US Air Force Chief of Staff General David Goldfein uh, provided insight into a US response should American soil ever be attacked by a nuclear strike. Using Russia as an example, due to the nation's large nuclear arsenal, <laughs> he outlined three steps he would take in the case of an unlikely nuclear emergency, according to a Fox News report. Uh, step one, according to Goldfein, is to call NATO. The first call will be to the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, General Todd Walters, who will tell me what he needs to join NATO forces to halt enemy activity and blunt their objectives. By virtue of the speed with which air and space component deploys and employs, he expects us, US Air Force, to be ready to arrive at his halt and his blunt force, Goldfein said. So, yeah, it goes on. And then, uh, how Goldfein said the US and NATO would also rely on ship based lasers, electromagnetic rail guns, and hyper velocity projectiles in the coming years. So, it looks as though um, uh, Russia is several steps ahead in their weaponry, and this is spooking uh, the uh, NATO and the United States. Now, I want to go on to a bit of a limb here, uh, just by basically asking a question, could there be a link between all of this and the uh, 7.1 earthquake that hit California right next to China Lake, which is a secret uh, nuclear facility where there are all sorts of secret programs going on. So I wanted to start off with this uh, next little bit. I think it's uh, quite interesting. Um, an interview was carried out with Russian defector Stanislav Lunyev, who is the highest ranking Russian military intelligence officer ever to have defected to the United States. Um, since 1992, he's been in the FBI witness protection program under their strictest protection protocols. And I have little doubt that he might possibly be the one person, unlike the hapless Sergei Skripal, who the Russians are not at all interested in, that the Russians might like to get their hands on. So let's just have a look at this. Um, he revealed uh, to the uh, Americans uh, the Russians' most secret war plans and special weapons, as he described in the following uh, exchange. So. Um, new kinds of weapons seem to be coming out of Russia. Here is a new one on me. Maybe a lot of other people. What is a seismic weapon and was or is the Russian government uh, doing to produce them? And Lunyev's answer was, this is actually artificial earthquake which could be generated by special devices which increase natural seismic waves which are under our Earth's surface and explode like natural earthquakes, with all the following circumstances. It's actually, this weapon development was in place for more than 20 years, and in the mid-80s there have been several field tests of this weapons, and maybe you've heard of the Armenian city's Spitak that was totally destroyed. Good Lord, don't tell me that was a Soviet test. Lunyev's answer, it was an accidental explosion. Question from B. That was an artificially induced earthquake? And the answer was, uh, it was accidental explosion of earthquake which was generated by the test of se seismic weapons. So, although not mentioned in uh, this report, the special devices referred to by Lunyev in his interview are best known in the West as tectonic weapons that function by creating a powerful charge of elastic energy in the form of deformed volume of the Earth's crust in a region of tectonic activity. 
that then becomes an earthquake once triggered by a nuclear explosion in the epicenter or a vast electrical pulse. Now, moving on, um, the Americans have been making accusations about uh, Russia carrying out secret nuclear tests. And the focus of this seems to be this, uh, the around the academic Lomonosov that the Russians have been building the most powerful uh, ever constructed non-self-propelled um, uh, vessel uh, in the world. So anyway, barely 24 hours after the academic Lomonosov became active, and uh, the Americans were kind of warning, making a warning, uh, um, the Rus Russia's most secretive submarine, Lasharik, was involved in a fire that I'm fairly uh, confident, as I've made clear, was uh, the result of an attack uh, by the Americans. And we come back to uh, this uh, threat of nuclear war by U.S. Air Chief of Staff General David Goldfein uh, in his three-step plan to wage nuclear war against Russia uh, if it retaliated. Um, so just coincidentally, within 24 hours of U.S. Air Force General Goldfein's threat, Alaska was hit by a massive uh, earthquake or a massive outbreak of 38 earth, earthquakes on the 3rd of July and then we had a 6.2 I think it was in Vancouver. Uh, this was followed by a 6.4 quake on the 4th of July Independence Day and then on the 5th of July we had a 7.1 magnitude quake which is five times more powerful. So all of this could be totally coincidental and natural. And the argument against any connection could be seen in the large earthquake which hit uh, Indonesia yesterday. I'm fully cognizant of that. However, when it comes to the secret war that I believe is being fought between Russia and America now, I see little room for coincidence, and we need to look at the possibilities, no matter how far-fetched it seems. In fact, everything that we are seeing seems far-fetched to me, and uh, if you wanted to regard uh, everything as kind of normal, you'd have to um, restrict all your information to the New Zealand media or the bulk of the, uh, the US and most of the Western media as well, because I'll never tell you any of this. Um, if coincidence is a remarkable concurrence um, of events or circumstances with apparent causal connection, well, I'd, if I was a betting man, I would say Russia is now retaliating against the United States uh, for killing its sailors and threatening nuclear war by employing its long known about earthquake um, weapon against America. So just as a footnote, um, we know uh, that America has its own uh, weapons of this description. We all know or about HARP. Um, and then here goes an article um, uh, from Fox News that quotes uh, the, um, the Venezuelan uh, media, the Hugo Chavez mouthpiece as they call it, uh, says that uh, US hit Haiti with an earthquake weapon uh, and uh, killed 200,000 innocents. Um, yeah, and he links it to he 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 links it to Harp, uh, 
blur. I think that we might have uh, uh, much more widespread and powerful methods than that uh, now. Um, so I'll just follow that on by a quick video and we'll uh, move on uh, from there. Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez has once again accused the United States of playing God. But this time it's Haiti's disastrous earthquake that he thinks the U.S. was behind. Spanish newspaper ABC quotes Chavez as saying that the U.S. Navy launched a weapon capable of inducing a powerful earthquake off the shore of Haiti. He adds that this time it was only a drill and the final target is destroying and taking over Iran. The existence of a tectonic weapon has never been proved, but it's used is often suspected by conspiracy theorists. For example, the leader of Georgia's Green Party accused Russia of being behind an earthquake on Georgian territory in 2002. If what I have covered so far is a kind of view orientated on Russia, and to some extent from their point of view, what follows is more of an American-centered view. And I'm not going to give my sources for this because already um, Dutch censor, who reports widely on this, uh, has reported having had shots fired at him uh, during the night in an attempt on his life, and I'm of a mind to protect my sources from attack. Um, we're living in very, very sensitive times. Um, I suspect that the importance of this goes way beyond a small town in the Mojave Desert. The significance lies first and foremost in what this could mean for the rest of California and possible, possibly the entire West Coast. So um, I posted this the other day um, as a report that posited um, that USGS officials are worried that a small fault line called the Garlock Fault might become activated and cause a much larger earthquake that would affect uh, Los Angeles. Um, so I'll just bring that to uh, your attention. Um, and um, uh, wait a minute. Uh, I've got to go. Uh... So this uh, is from Margot this morning, and she's showing how the earthquakes are, are spreading out and especially uh, to the north and she said they're still coming in the Searles Valley region of California and spreading out especially to the north to the Coso volcanic fields uh, and in the fourth 24 hours since the beginning of the episode USGS is showing 1400 and six earthquakes worldwide. Of those, 1,177 were at Searles Valley, Ridgecrest, California. So this was at uh, 9 a.m. this morning. So. Now, I found the uh, following interesting. Um, looking at NASA worldview, as I do from time to time, um, there have been a lot of uh, clouds like this that look as though they've had a comb through them, or they've been created that way by harp or microwave energy, or another way of saying this is uh, that they've been beamed. So there's been a lot of this happening in the Arctic, as can be seen here, this is uh, Norway Zimla in northern Siberia. Um, and also, I think, in other areas of the Arctic. Uh, but then what really interested me 
is what's happening in California. So this is on the days leading up to uh, the different earthquakes. So this is off the coast somewhere. This is uh, right down in Southern California. Um, there's been a lot of uh, beaming, these strange uh, clouds that have had microwave energy through them. And uh, well, that's from the 1st of July. And this is on the 2nd of July. So all of this is happening out to sea where nobody would see it. And a lot of, uh, you know, the land is, 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 is clear. So, so there's this. That's the 3rd of July. Um, and then the 4th, that's the day in which the first earthquake at Ridgecrest happened. Ah, oh, sorry, no. Uh, uh, yes, yes, the 4th. And finally, on the 5th, and it's still looking very strange, even though uh, the uh, cloud is, is, is thicker there. And just notice how it's all off the coast, and the, uh, you've got a, a thin area here of, uh, of clear, clear sky, as well as um, inland. So, um, this seems to have been happening over some weeks, and one hypothesis that's been mentioned to me is scalar energy, and it's related to this man. I'd never heard of him before. I'd never really known about this before, and I'm not quite sure what to think of it. Uh, I've always sort of kept to the edge of all the arguments about harp and the like. Uh, but this chap is Tom Bearden, and he talked about scalar energy um, during the 1990s. So here goes an example. Uh, different countries were developing, he says, uh, scalar energy to attack other countries. And uh, the proponents of this theory say it is possible to create um, earthquakes with it. So you can make the uh, ground shake, you can make tectonic plates more move and cause the magma to heat up with microwave energy. And just because you don't have clouds in the sky, it doesn't mean to say that you're not being uh, subject to all of this, you're not being beamed. It just means that you can't see uh, any, any uh, uh, evidence of this. So. Oh, wait a minute, we're back to this. So, um, this is, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, this is, this, this is around uh, Ridgecrest, uh, uh, California. Um, so, perhaps this is a sign of something going on that we're not supposed to know about, just as the other information which I uh, discussed before. Perhaps there's a covert war going on, which is being fought with secret technology rather than conventional weapons. Uh, and it does seem that China Lake, um, the uh, military installation near Ridgecrest, California, may have been targeted, uh, especially if any of what I've been discussing is vaguely true. Um, it has been... Um, uh, evacuated. Um, yeah, it's a top uh, secret location where it seems uh, many weapons, including weapons, t t uh, including nuclear weapons, are, are, um, are tested. And um, who knows? Uh, I've been told that there might be an element of UFOs and alien technology associated with it. But who would ever know? But uh, scalar energy or some other type of earthquake weapon would be a perfect way of attacking a military base and destroy it. You'd never know. Nobody could prove it. Uh, it's because it's a natural disaster. And I remember in the Harry Potter films, it was wonderful allegory because they 
dark forces of Voldemort caused all of these uh, disasters by magic. And of course, then it showed the, um, you know, the, the muggle uh, media sort of just describing all these natural disasters that just happened to be coincidental. Anyway, if any of this sets off the Cascadia subduction zone, or uh, it's game over, or perhaps if this other uh, fault line goes as well, California will go, um, the whole west coast would be gone, and that could set off Yellowstone too. On the other hand, this could all be just part of nature doing its thing, and all the other stuff going on at the same time is just coincidental. But that's not what I think. I tend to look for um, uh, for connections, and it's not always possible for our human minds to um, to establish connections. I don't know what is going on, but I strongly suspect that reality is nowhere near what we are being told. Well, in conclusion, uh, those are just some of my thoughts, which I've gleaned from various uh, sources and kind of, yeah, conjecturing about what is happening. And I believe, I mean, their information there uh, is probably much better than mine, but the, I, I think that's what the, um, the intelligence agencies do. They get information, a lot of it gleaned from exactly the same sources that I'm getting it, and then they just consider all the different possible options, and that's what I'm doing. But if we mere mortals do it, of course, it's, uh, it's called conspiracy theory. Now, do I think that the Russians uh, might be uh, lying and not telling the full truth about their top secret weapons program? Um, yes, I do. Uh, and it's called uh, Operational Secrecy in Time of War. For, as I've made clear, I believe that there is a... Um, um, a secret war going on using new and secret weapons, so it's none of it's in the open, it's all um, perfectly um, deniable, um, but real blows are being struck. Um, yeah, I just want to say something, I mean, a lot of people in the West, I see a very sort of naive about Russia, and they think they're just like us. And uh, and the, you know, Putin is 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 good, uh, and so he wouldn't, he couldn't possibly lie. And RT and Sputnik couldn't be pulling the wool over your eyes. Well, I'm afraid that's just not how it works. Um, I know a little bit about the Russians, and I've heard various sort of anecdotes. Um, and have you noticed that they're so reasonable, so diplomatic, and they don't make threats like the Americans. The Americans um, kind of jump around and puff out their chest and show how strong they are and, and make you know threat after threat. Uh, which often they can't back up. Whereas the Russians, they say nothing. They say nothing, and they're very diplomatic until the moment they're not. And then they act. And I want to just tell you a little anecdote. Uh, I heard this, I don't know whether it's from the Seiko or, for, or from Stephen Cohen, but a story from the Russian schoolyard. Um, so whereas people in the West, especially Americans, might kind of try and puff up their chests and show how strong they are, Russian kids don't do that and they seem to be giving in to the bully. Um, you know, they might be even seen as sort of slightly obsequious. I'm not sure. And then one fine day when the bully's least expecting it, then they 
retaliate. And uh, yeah, if you've uh, ever been on the end of a Russian fisticuffs, <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't forget it. So that's kind of really how I feel about things. Uh, I try not to buy into this kind of dualistic kind of good versus evil kind of, um, um, you know, sort of thing and, and, and try and stick with the, you know, with the subtleties. So, and analyze rather than judge. It's a very kind of Western mindset. And um, the Russians are less susceptible to that. Uh, they're actually quite different to us. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll leave it uh, at that. Uh, this is uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.